Every brand in the apparel space needs to be working towards this place that nothing goes in a landfill. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wonderful people of the world, and welcome back to Shared Ingredients. I'm your host, Andrew Pelosi. I'm excited to be joined by the great John Moore. John is a fantastic human, a visionary in design, sustainability, fashion, surfing. He cares so much about his community, people, the planet. You can often find him at beach cleanups. You can very often find him surfing and doing incredible things in the community and the greater world. And he's always so full of life and positive energy. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Shared Ingredients, coming to you from Venice, California today. Both me and my guest live here. He is Mr. John Moore, a.k.a. Juan Moss, who also happens to have what I consider to be one of the greatest Instagram handle names, at Bonfire Beach Kids, which definitely has a mood and I feel like embodies who he is. What is the origin story of the name Bonfire Beach Kids? Um, Thanks, Or just a cool name. You know what's so... You know what's so funny is I think everyone thinks it's like my kids and just my own love of the beach. Um, that name predates my kids. I was reading some poetry that a friend's girlfriend wrote. I've never even said this, but I remember she just wrote it. It was like some sentence that she had written, like the bonfire beach kids. It was not meant to be one word, but I just I thought it was beautiful. And yeah, it was like. I had a blog called Bonfire Beach Kids that, you know, probably goes back to the early, I think 2003 or four. So yeah, that's where it came from. A a buddy's old girlfriend, her poetry. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, it's definitely, it's definitely a mood because I saw that right around the time I met you. And that was like, that left an impression right away. I was like, okay, so this name gives me a whole vision on who you are. And I think uh, you you embody the name, so so there's that. Maybe I have grown into it a little bit, and I, I do love all of the above. So I love my kids, and I do love the beach and bonfires. Let's start with your daily routines. I, I think you're one of the most dedicated watermen I know because I see you on days in Venice when most would say that it's not good enough to go out, but you're there at first light. So what's a typical day for you? Um, yeah, I had one of those mornings this morning. Um, I almost without fail get up and the first thing I do is jump in the car and go to my favorite little stretch of beach. I knew this morning the waves were going to be next to flat, but you know, part of it for me is just being there when the sun rises, being out in the, being out in nature, being out in the cold water, um, sharing it with a few good friends. You know, I just, to me, that's the best way to start my day when I don't start my day that way. Um, I definitely like pay the price. Uh, it, the stress hits a little harder, you know. The um, so I definitely try to start every single day that way. Um, my pandemic routine is a lot different than my normal routine, so I'm almost I'm having to think a little bit about you know I used to do that and then drive the kids to school and I'd be at my desk before anyone else here, um, but today just has. You know, the, our, our schedules recently, it's just kind of the Zoom vortex. So I surf every morning and then I'm at my computer shortly thereafter. And I try not to schedule anything before 10, just so I can get a little bit ahead of things. And um, being in the creative side of our business, what we used to be able to do with a, a Sharpie and you know, five people in a room for 10 minutes now takes like three different Zooms and, you know, you you know the drill. I, I usually I stop every day and I take my dog for a walk. So that's my forced break. I know he needs me and that's my forced break. Otherwise, I just work straight through the end of the day, have dinner with the family, and I'll usually end up working a little bit into the evening too. And then, you know, that's five days a week. And then I try not to look at my inbox or anything related to work on the weekends if possible. Um, But yeah, that's a little bit of my schedule these days. For those who aren't as familiar, please give a little bit of context as to what Outer Known is. Most people would say we're a sustainable clothing brand for men and women. Um, We, one of our founders is Kelly Slater, 11 time world champion who of surfing, who's lived his entire life as clean as possible with, you know, thinking about his impact on this earth and thinking about everything that he puts in his body. So, you know, pretty good recipe to apply to what we're putting on our body. 
Um, and, you know, both Kelly, I, and some of the other founders had sort of grown up in and around surfing, but the growing up part is key because, you know, there wasn't a whole lot when you looked around that we could relate to style wise, but, you know, wouldn't have big logos. You know, we just wanted clothes that were smarter, felt a little more elevated and were built with quality as the most important piece of the puzzle. And sustainability to me is just a benchmark of quality. If we're not thinking about sustainability as a benchmark of quality moving forward, like something's wrong, you know, in the past, it was like, all of this is built better. It's in, you know, a color palette that's relevant right now. Like people weren't talking about the impact that those clothes were um, leaving on the earth. So that's really what that's, that's been our jumping off point. What are the things about existing clothing manufacturing that people should know about that they might not know about? Because I think your average person might have no idea how unsustainable or bad for the planet typical apparel production may be. You know, let's start with the obvious one. The world actually doesn't need more clothes. We are making something like, I, I think it was like 15 times the amount of clothes that we need per person every single year on this planet, something crazy like that. And it's like most of all of that either immediately ends up in the landfills or very soon thereafter. And it's all conventional fabric. So, or a big percentage of it. So it's just, we're making virgin materials. We're building new products. Um, you know, we're training everyone that they need newness all the time. And so what happens at the end of the end of, the life cycle of you liking something you're either going to, you know, hopefully you're going to give it away, recycle it, um, you know, take it to a vintage shop. A lot of people just toss it. And so, you know, too much of what we do in apparel is ending up in the landfills and we're just, we're making too many conventional fabrics. So what we set out to do was think about, things at the material um, impact and how do we start by using only preferred fibers. So organic, uh, recycled, um, there's bio alternatives now that we're working towards bringing to the market. Um, so, you know, materials is a big piece of this puzzle. Um, it's not enough because even by using organic cotton, which is so much better because we're using much less water. We're not using any harmful chemicals, we're still making virgin fibers. So we're still making something that at the end of its life cycle, something has to be done with it. So what we're now pushing towards is complete circularity by 2030. One of the things that I think that you and the team at Outer Known have done really well is storytelling. You've been able to bring awareness to some of the challenges that we face as a society related to consumerism and, of course, apparel. And I remember when you launched your denim, it was a fascinating story about how unsustainable and bad making jeans actually is on the environment. There was the idea of the dyeing process. Can you speak about that a bit? Denim, it's it's one of the most dirty categories in fashion. And, you know, it's, it's the dyes and the chemicals that it takes to get the jeans to look the way you are told to, you know, the way that fashion dictates that you want them. Um, so bleach uh, to pull out the color, you know, deep indigo dyes to give you a real, a saturated ground. And so all of those things together, if not regulated um, in the old way, you just kind of, you did it all. It all went down the drain, straight into the river, straight into the sea. And so, you know, everything we do is not just at the tier one level. So the manufacturer level, it's all the way down the chain. So it's, you know, what are, what are the mills that we're working with? So when we are producing denim, we're working with the two most sustainable mills in the world. Um, and, we're using organic cotton and we're making sure that there's been no harmful chemicals used both in the process of milling the goods, but also in the process of manufacturing the goods 
at Cytex, um, our tier one facility that is making our C genes. So, you know, it's easy to pick on denim because it is such a dirty business, but it's really like the dyes we use, the chemical treatments we use, just, just because we want something to look weathered and worn, um, it's insane. And so, you know, we're, our, our material impact is the biggest impact we can make. And we're trying, and we're starting there and we're trying to use um, 100% preferred fibers today, tomorrow, 100% circular fibers. So our goal by 2030 is to design all of the pollution and waste out of everything we make. So everything we're making will come from something that already exists. So we'll, we'll, we'll have been recycled or regenerated. And then that end of life will also be considered. So like today we bring, we'll take back all of your C genes. We're working on a new program that will take back anything else um, that you uh, buy from us that either you decide you don't want anymore, it didn't work for some reason, or there was a flaw. That is where the real, like um, we all, every brand in the apparel space needs to be working towards this place that nothing goes into landfills. And if we're not thinking that way, we're just producing more objects that ultimately need to find, we'll, we'll need to find a home and too many of them go into the ground. Wow. Yeah. That, that storytelling is fantastic because it really resonates and people understand it. And I, I think going back to my original question, which is, Kind of an odd question, but is how do you balance the positivity of the the positive impact you're making versus sort of the doom and gloom narrative that people don't know about? I mean, I think you guys do it really well, but my point is you're an optimistic person, but you're exposed to all these negative things. So I guess it's you're trying to make the impact that you can make. Um, I don't know if you have a thought on that. On that, I question. do. I mean, look, I think for for those of us that have been in the business now for as long as we have building clothes this way has become second nature. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying it's, it's our new normal. So I think the most important thing we can do now is build epic products. Sustainability won't sell you something. You're going to like tune into something because you saw it and you loved it and you, you, you loved the color, you loved the cut and you thought you, you needed to have that. And, we know at the end of the day, I don't know and has your back and we're going to build it sustainably. But I don't wake up in the morning thinking about how are we going to solve all of our sustainable hurdles. I'm thinking about making the best possible products, telling the best possible stories about those products. And by the way, because of the process and system we built the brand upon, we will not compromise anything as it relates to sustainability or the welfare of our workforce. That's very commendable and awesome. You had a quote about the way that you encourage people to, to look at what they're wearing and where it's coming from. So I'm wearing an outer known sweater right now. At the East Bank, it looks great on you. <laughs> Thank you. How do you get people to think differently about what they wear? You live right around the corner from me. Um, and we live in a we live in a place that celebrates this type of thinking and starts teaching it in the schools at the earliest stage. So, you know, I, I can't speak to your childhood, but I didn't have that. Like I didn't grow up thinking about taking care of the earth. Um, it wasn't something they taught us in school. You know, I love that it's something that my kids think about in, innately now it's part of their daily lives. I hope that, myself and my partner have instilled all of those um, values in them at home, not just what they're learning in school. I've got the work I do around sustainability with Outer Known, and then I've got kind of the way we, we try to live our lives as a family unit, and we try to live really sustainably in, in, in that sense too. And um, hopefully that all has a positive impact on the environment around us. as customers that we're all we're looking for things every day in every single category outside of apparel too 
to support brands that are putting, you know, the planet and people first. Sounds a little cliche. A lot of people talk about this today, but like vote with your dollars. We have all the power. So support the brands that believe in what you believe in and it'll drive more uh it'll it'll drive more innovation it'll drive more brands to to be doing and thinking this way yeah i totally agree you've certainly had an incredible career doing things that you're highly passionate about and you've been able to make a big contribution to what would be your advice to somebody getting started in their career graduating from high school or college or who's just trying to find kind of a new path or fulfillment in their life appreciate the nice words i um i thank you andrew i I don't know. I've I've always been lucky to have a lot of great people around me and worked for some pretty inspiring uh humans over the years. You know, I think the most important thing that you can do no matter what you want to pursue in life is just to work hard, work ethic. Um I think it's greatly underestimated how important that is, especially in today's like fully connected social media world that we live in where it seems like everyone goes from you know the idea to global creative director overnight that doesn't really happen <laughs> it's about hard work it's about dedication it's about obsession so it's about really throwing everything you have into what you love um you know i think beyond working hard is just be there for others um I was lucky early on to have some great mentors and people that were more than teachers to me. They were there for me. They were um every step of the process they would like walk me through. Um you know, when when I was down, they would before they asked for something, they would um recognize that they could tell something was off. And I think that's really important, like especially now when we're all looking at each other through computer screens. Like how are you doing? Like what can I do for you? Not just, "Hey, we're on deadline and, you know, I need these five things for you in the next 3 hours." So, you know, work hard over deliver, be there for others. Just a good vibe goes a long way. I appreciate you saying I'm very optimistic and and that's what I throw off. It's not always like that internally and so I do recognize that you know no matter if you're starting out or you're in a leadership position just that vibe you throw off to others simply put a smile goes a long way even when the pressure's on I love it I think the a good vibe goes a long way is one of the coolest things I've heard in a while that feels like it should be like the bonfire beach kids bio in Instagram or or, right. or the or the tagline or the sub tagline for out or known that's a pretty a pretty nice statement. That might be the title of this episode. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I do. Yeah, cool. Is there anyone you want to shout out who's helped you on your journey or who's who's inspiring you currently? There's three people that I thought about when I knew that we'd be talking. Um a woman named Penny Hints, I met a year and a half ago. A friend of mine Wyatt Troll told me to seek out this woman to learn transcendental meditation. Now I'm not going to pretend that I'm a good student and I'm doing this every day. But what I will tell you is you know this woman was a pioneer in TM. Um she was there at the beginning. She uh she taught George Harrison among other people. Um just to just to be around her in her, you know, she's probably in her 60s. She lives in Boise, Idaho now. Just this calming spirit and you know having something that she's dedicated her life to and teaching others i mean um huge inspiration to me i i actually have her on a list i need to reach out to because she said once you're in once you're in the world like reach out anytime if you need a refresher so penny hence my friend pam shamshiri i don't know if you know pam but she's been top of my mind last few days because every time i open up architectural digest one of her homes is in there so she's she's just this um amazing designer i've known pam my my most of uh my adult life our kids have grown up together but just having a friend that is 
constantly raising the bar like that in their respective craft is so inspiring. I mean, I would equate it to, to those of us that are surfers to like surfing with someone who's just so good that you're always aspiring to like, you know, surf a little bit better because, because they are, um, do what they're doing, go, uh, try new things. And so my friend Pam, and then, um, Here's a good name for, for you or those in your community to Google, but Dr. Apostolos Lekos, Dr. Lekos. I discovered him on a podcast. His practice is here in Santa Monica, functional medicine. I would say everyone should look into functional medicine. I went down that path a couple of years ago because I was, people like you were saying I was kind of throwing off this very optimistic vibe, but in turn, you know, inside it was this like, ball of stress and so you know this man has changed my life and um i think he knows that i've told him a few times but it's just about just changing your approach to sort of all the fundamentals of your day the way you deal with stress the way you eat nutrition is a huge part of it and just you know really we all have voices we all have voices in our head so like you can either have stressful and negative conversations with yourself, or you can have very positive conversations with yourself. And so, you know, those two of those are really connected, Penny and, and Dr. Lakos and my friend Pam is just a constant source of inspiration. But yeah, those three all pulling a lot of inspiration and influence from them today. So you hadn't mentioned transcendental meditation as being part of your routine. So is, is meditation a part of your daily practice now? I need to get back into it. So what and I just went for a walk today with my friend Wyatt, who made the intro to Penny, but um, Wyatt does it every day. So they recommend at a minimum 20 minutes a day, twice a day. I was doing that for a while and it was before the pandemic and I was taking time out of my day and it was a game changer. I now, when I wake up, my inbox is already so full that I know if I can just go escape into the ocean for an hour or two, that is my meditation in the morning. I am not taking the proper time to do it right now. So that that's my honest answer. I'm doing something called box breathing in the afternoons, which is just a quick, you don't need much time at all. Um, you can actually do it with a couple of minutes. And so that's also a form of meditation. But, you know, I, I think it's just really important to take set time in your day to do whatever makes you happy. Those feel good moments, that is the most important thing we can be doing. I do want to get back to the transcendental twice a day, 20 minutes, because I it was really good for me. And I and and I will once we get back into the normal swing of things. But um, right now I'm finding my meditation in, in other ways. Dr. Laco sounds incredible. And I think the idea of functional medicine is super interesting. For those who aren't familiar, can you elaborate on what functional medicine entails? Well, I'll tell you my experience, you know, Dr. Lakos might explain it slightly differently, but you know, there's, there's all this, there's conventional medicine, you know, there's going to the doctor, you're going to tell them how you feel, tell he or she, how you feel. They're going to do some tests and they're going to, you know, usually say, write you a prescription prescription. Functional medicine is really like mind, body, and soul. And I know it sounds a little hippy dippy, but it's, it's really like, let's learn everything we can about you. You know, Dr. Lakos, I've never been to a proper therapist, but I would imagine he's as close as it's gotten for me. He went all the way back to my youth. What was my upbringing like? What was my relationship with my family like? Was there any trauma in my life at a young age or any age, even as an adult? Taking all of that into consideration, learning a lot about my professional life, what causes me stress? What do I love more importantly too? Because his understanding of like knowing where those happy points are um, can really lead us into other positive directions. But then it's, there's a lot of science based to it too. So then they do all these tests, um, weeks of tests, dude, gross tests that I, ne I don't, I, I, I don't want to like, tell you about right now because it's almost embarrassing but every part of your body they figure out exactly what's happening and 
And then you cross reference all of this stuff. So your body genetics, you know, what all of the, um, the science is punching out. And then all of this wisdom that has come from his practical experience, because he's also an MD, but of also, you know, listening to all of these other alternative practices and, and alternative medicines in different parts of the spiritual world. Um, I haven't spoken to this medium he wanted me to speak to, but he wanted me to speak to a medium. Um, and, you know, there's, it's, it's sort of the sum of all parts. But to me, fundamentally, the biggest unlock was I was drinking too much, so I stopped drinking. It's pretty obvious, but like game changer. Um, I changed my diet completely. So a lot of the things that I was eating, I didn't know was having, was literally from the inside out killing me. It wasn't the right mix with my body genetics. And so anyway, it's all of the above that he tackles. It's sort of like, it's this intense, I don't know what his process is. I think it's no less than three months. Mine went a little bit longer because I dragged my feet with the tests. Once you kind of go through it, you're in for life. And I know that there's a lot of other functional medicine uh, practitioners out there. So Dr. Lakos isn't the only one. He just happened to be someone that was recommended to me locally. But I just think it's a, it's a better way of trying to diagnose and fix what's broken. And a lot of our, you know, it's, I'm not going to say it, it's not something that my kids need, but as adults, we just internalize too much and just think it's just life. And it really doesn't have to be that way. You know, like by changing my diet a little bit, by dealing with my stress a little bit better, I'm just in a completely different place every day now. So um, that's my very long winded way of answering your question about functional medicine, but look into it. So with the impact that Dr. Lakos has had on you and the things that he's recommended you do, some of them may be extreme as far as the diet or sobriety. How did you take those on? Was it a cold turkey sort of arrangement or bit by bit? I have that cold turkey mentality. So I definitely made some pretty quick changes. Um, you know, you can certainly ease into it. I think when you see the science, so I probably undersold the science part of it. You know, when you actually see all of your charts and understand what your body needs. And then I don't remember exactly what they call it, but they just, anything you could ever eat or drink is on this list and it's three, two or one. And if it's a three, you got to cut it out. And when you see things like, and it sounds obvious because a lot of people had this like, like go on years ago, but like dairy, milk, cow's milk, those were not agreeing with my body. I should not have been having it. So like those things I cut out immediately. Um, I wasn't this, this, this is a funny one for many people in my community that are vegan. Um, I was, I wouldn't say I was vegan or vegetarian, but I, I hardly ate any meat. Uh, one of the things he told me was you need to eat beef, lamb. So I'm getting specific now, but like those were things I sort of eased into. So I, you know, there were things that I immediately, I immediately stopped drinking. I think, yeah, I haven't, I, I really haven't had a drink in two years. Other things were kind of a slower build. I immediately stopped drinking cow's milk. I love the taste of oat milk now, by the way. I didn't at first, I do now. Um, so that's the other funny thing is my partner always tells me the things I love, she tastes and, you know, they're not so good. So maybe my, your, your bar lowers a little bit, but, um, I don't know. I'm definitely feeling healthier and I really encourage everyone, whether it's someone like Dr. Lakos and specifically functional medicine or just this general pursuit of alternatives, you know, and just mind and soul, not just body. I think awesome. that's really important. That's great. We are at my favorite part of my podcast where I talk to creative people about the creative things that inspire them. So let's start with a little curation. What are some books that you've been reading recently? Books, I'm very thankful to, see. like I haven't always been a book reader like my partner and our daughter. 
they just consume books and I love it. I have really made an effort over the last few years. I just finished a book on Saturday. It was about a surfer named Chris O'Rourke, Child of the Storm. Not the best title, but a fantastic story. Timmy O'Rourke is a very good friend of mine, someone I wake up most mornings and surf with. His father was Chris O'Rourke, who is one of the greatest surfers coming out of La Jolla in the, in the 1970s. Died way too young. I think he died at 22 of Hodgkin's lymphoma. So I just finished that book. Incredibly inspiring. It was really early on in the days of really having any understanding of that sickness. And, you know, today, I guess if they detect it early enough, it's almost always curable. But, you know, in, in his case, it was too late. And it was just a really inspiring story about him continuing to try, try to strive to be the best surfer in the world. And there's a lot of other parables that lie within that. And then it, I just finished that and I switched right over to a book called Tosh, which is Tosh Berman. It's, uh, I don't know if you know the artist Wallace Berman. He was really kind of born out of the beatnik culture of the 50s, but just an artist I really like. Um, it was written about, it was written by his son growing up with his parents and just all the stories of living in this bohemian household and just great eras in both Los Angeles and San Francisco. And um, it's a really, I, I actually read this book a couple of years ago and I never finished it. So I just started it again. So also wrote, read a little James Baldwin recently. So I've been reading, Andrew, I'm reading books. I'm proud to tell you I'm reading multiple books. That's, that's a good list. I'll definitely check those out. And um, I've, I've seen Timmy in the water for years. He's noticeably one of the standouts always and a super nice guy. We, we've admired each other's Anderson boards. Rest in peace, Scott. That's yeah. uh, terrible. But it reminded me just when you, when you talked about the passing of his father. I'm glad that you're an avid reader now. Talk about some music groups that have inspired you over the years or that you're listening to now. It runs the gamut. Velvet Underground to Frank Ocean. I love classic and country and Towns Van Sant and Jay Maskus and Ed Askew and Mapache and Claude Debassy. The director, Steve McQueen, just made a series of short films called uh, Small Axe, named after the, the Bob Marley song. One of those short films is called Lover's Rock. And it was, a, I think it was about Steve McQueen's upbringing or just some of his personal experiences uh, growing up in the UK. Anyway, phenomenal soundtracks. I've been listening to a lot of Lover's Rock. What, I, what I'm loving is my daughter is almost 16 and she's like, the musical switch has gone on with her too. And we just got our record player. And so she's as like into it as we are. So she's always like coming in like, what's that? can I borrow that record? And uh, so it's been, a, it's been fun trading music with her. That's awesome. Last two questions. Yep. It's never too late to what? Uh, reinvent yourself. This is not a midlife crisis, but I definitely have been feeling recently that like picking up something new, changing things up, um, starting over. I just feel as humans, we're better equipped to try new things with some life experience. So, you know, I'm at a place in my life where, you know, I'm excited about what's ahead. And I, I'm not saying I'm, I'm walking away from anything, but I just like, I'm ready to take on new things. Um, and I know a lot of other people in this, you know, maybe a little bit of this is the pandemic too. I know um, we said we weren't going to focus on that. But I just think right now, more than ever, this is a time that's right for change and new beginnings. And I just, it's never too late. Guitar, I want to pick up a guitar. Um, I want to, I want to be a teacher too. So there, there's just all these things. I want to, I want to be better with my hands. I want to, I, I am so envious of carpenters and woodworkers. I, I never was, that wasn't something that I grew up learning and I, I want to pick that up. So that was a fantastic answer. This next statement follows a similar line of thinking. Don't be afraid to be honest, cut through it, especially in group scenarios. I mean, it's one thing with you and I are friends and we've known each other for a long time and we're just riffing, but you know, I think in company dynamics 
over Zoom, especially, like, get to the point, speak your mind. Um, you know, no time to waste with hesitancy or reservation or, you know, even small talk. Now, I'm not saying you don't ask someone how their day is, but I do feel that there's just like, I like, let's move at a clip and let's make exciting, fast decisions. Even if we're going to have some missteps, let's fail fast. That frees up more time to try other things. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, it's been a pleasure catching yeah, up and thank you so much for your time. I'll, I'll yeah. do an outro on the podcast, but Mr. John Moore, Juan Moss, Bonfire Beach Kids, keep being a legend. Uh, thank you. Andrew. Yeah, we'll see you on the beach one of these mornings. Sounds good. I'm sure I will. See you, buddy. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Check out John at Bonfire Beach Kids. Be sure to check out Outer Known. As he said, the most powerful thing you can do is to vote with your dollars. Support brands like Outer Known that are making fashion far more sustainable. They have fantastic stuff for men and women, and they have a wonderful team of people who truly care about what they do and care about the future of our planet. Big shout out to the crew over there, Mark, Max, Josh, Travis, Terry Hardy, and of course, Kelly Slater. Awesome group of people doing incredible things for the world. You can find me on social at Pelosi and at Shared Ingredients. And I appreciate all your support and liking, commenting, and any form of promoting this. When I think about John, I can't conclude without saying, if you can make a little impact in your community, go do it. Next time you go to the beach, take three for the sea, pick up trash when you see it. Every little small act can make a big difference. When you're purchasing clothes, think about what you're buying. Lead with passion, lead with inspiration, be a good human. You're all awesome. Thank you for being here. Yeet!